guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you a Cinema 4D tutorial. Um, this one is actually on Spline Dynamics, and I'm also going to show you a way of how it can be used um, in the project, kind of an example as well. Uh, so let's just jump in, and by the way, it is actually my birthday today, I turned 21, and I've got a new microphone, so I might sound a little clearer, and you might not hear the kind of sound of my computer as much so yeah so spline dynamics is all about kind of using a spline and making it <laughs> have actual dynamics on so it actually is affected by gravity and other effectors uh, so we'll set up a little scene here and I'll kind of talk you through my way through it so the first thing I want to do is insert a spline so I'm going to actually make a helix spline and as it's my 21st, I decided that the start radius will be 21, the end radius will be 21, and the height will be 21 as well. Just because I can. Now these numbers aren't exact, you don't have to use these ones, you can use anything you like. And for the subdivisions, I'm going to have 6, uh, just so it has this kind of almost triangular look. And I'm going to change the intermediate points to uniform as well just so all the points are equally distributed around. So with that done, I'm going to make the spline editable, and by doing that I'm going to press C on my keyboard, and this will allow us to actually edit the spline. And with our point mode selected, I'm going to select all the points, right click, subdivide, and that will just make a few more points, just so uh, there's a few more to work with. So now I'm going to right click on the spline, go to hair tags, and go down to spline dynamics, and straight away if we click play, it'll fall down because now it is actually affected by forces and gravity, which is pretty cool. So if we go back to our helix, go to our live selection mode, and click on one of the endpoints here, then go back to our tag, go to the properties um, menu, and here it says fixed if we click set now when we click play all the points kind of drop down from there you get this weird shape which is why we need to change the stiffness to zero or so I thought uh, this is because we got the type on bezier if we change it to B spline there we go now it works how we want it to. So now we've got this pretty cool kind of uh, spline which kind of folds out and you could use this as uh, a guide for a chain if you wanted a kind of dynamic chain but that's not what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is actually put a sweep nobs around this so if we make a end side and change the radius down to something like 3 and then go into our nerves and sweep nerves. Just let both of these drag it in. Maybe it's still a bit large. Put this down to two. So here we have our sweep nerves, which if we were to click play, dangles down as if it would anything else. So next what we can do is if we shut off the sweep nerves for now and make a null object, go into our top view here go down to our helix and select this endpoint here and you can see I'm just going to change this to 21 and minus 21 if it lets me oh no because as it has dynamics on I can't actually change the position but I can change the position of the null so if we copy the Z position and put it onto our null object here as well as the X position and putting it here so now this null object is actually over the top of the end point here and so if you right click on our helix hair tags and constraint put our null object in and click set now if we go back to our main view you'll find that um, the endpoint is connected to this null object, so if I increase the timeline to something like 20, I can now actually 
drag this null object around and the point is actually attached to it which is pretty cool so now we can kind of animate this to whatever we like and what we can also do is in the spline dynamics we can change the gravity to zero so now it kind of floats around as if it's in space which is the look I'm going for so if we put the null back and just make sure gravity is set to zero now it doesn't move and if we drag the null object out it floats around so this is the basic animation for what I want and of course this works with the sweep verbs as well um, very fluid animation looks very nice so next I'm going to show you an example of how it can be used in an actual kind of scene which I will include in the description as well so what I'm going to do is insert a sphere make the radius 50 the segments I'm going to bump up to 60 and change the type to isohedron or if that's not how it's pronounced I don't know and what we're going to do is use nitroblast if you have it to actually break a hole in here and animate it so the sweep nerves kind of bursts out so like the most effective way I've found to do this is if you select the sphere and make it editable by pressing C go to our points mode go back to our live selection mode and down here in the options we have mode I'm going to change this to vertex painting I'm going to change the radius to 20 and on this axis here I'm just going to paint a small circle around um, this axis where it will burst through and basically nitroblast will take this break this section more than the rest so this is where the sweep nerves will burst out from so this is where we want it to break so now with our sphere selected, go to plugins, nitroblast, and main, and we'll get this menu here. Go to vertex map, and I'm going to change the number down to 15, and then just click fracture. This will take a few seconds to break. You can add more or less segments if you want, uh, but this will do for now. So here we have um, our sphere. And if we go back to the options menu with our sphere selected, I'm just going to change the thickness to 10% and just click fracture again. And what this is going to do is actually kind of hollow out the sphere so it has thickness rather than it just being one solid lump. And so it just looks a little bit nicer in my opinion. In fact, I can show you now if I make a cube and make this a bit thinner drop it down beneath and just make it a bit larger there and if I put a collider tag on here so it doesn't move but it will interact with objects and press play you can see here what we have is um, a bit of thickness to our object and if you look here if I turn on lines ooh, we actually have a lot of subdivisions here but as the sphere goes to the back, there's more or less none. So this is what we want. I can delete the cube now. But we don't want this to um, actually play straight away. We want this to, uh, the dynamics to be, rather than immediately, we want collision. And if we go into the actual tag, um, on the collision, we want to turn off self collisions. And we just want to turn the bounce down to something like 30, the friction up to something like 60, and the noise to something like 0.2. So this will mean that it won't kind of create too much mess when it actually explodes. And to explode it, I'm actually going to use part of Nitro Blast, which is the bomb. And if I was to play it straight away, you can see it kind of bursts out a bit, but it's not quite where we want. So if we go into our top view and move this bomb to where our fracture is and if we click play here it kind of explodes a bit too much because the range is too high so we're just going to bring this down a bit to something like here so you see we get this kind of crack so we can increase it a little bit so something like this looks pretty good uh, but as you can see the animation happens pretty quick so if we press command or control D it brings up our project menu we go to dynamics 
I'm going to change the gravity down to something like 100 and the time scale down to 30%. So now when we click play, you can see everything happens a little bit slower. So this looks good, but it happens a bit too early in our scene. So I'm going to change the start to about 3 seconds. So now when we play through until it hits 3 seconds or um, 90 frames it doesn't do anything so this could mean you could have like a camera panning around and then the animation happens and next what we want to do is actually on say um, 2.9 seconds or the 87th frame if we keyframe this null object which is connected to our spline and keyframe its position here then at 3.2 seconds or 96 if we actually move it somewhere over here away in the distance and move its position here now when we play through you can see it kind of extends out so maybe it goes a little bit too far so we will change its position a little bit so we'll move it back to say 200 this might be too um, close and I think the bomb is on the wrong side of our shape so if we move this back a little bit here it will blow up in the opposite direction so this looks a bit better but as you can see the hair actually goes through our object now this is something you can change um, in our spline dynamics we have under the tag menu collisions and if you actually go into your Nitro Blast menu here, right click on it, go to Hair Tags and Hair Collider, and then right click on it and copy tag to children, and we can just delete that main one. Now, hopefully, when we play it through, we will see it somewhat doesn't hit. It's not perfect because I think the timing's a little bit out, um, but you can use the collider. I believe this has to happen a little bit earlier. So we can try this out. Oh, that doesn't want to do anything. It's all about kind of um, experimenting. But the way I found to fix it was just to move this a little bit further out. And hopefully... Well, you get the idea at least. And this looks really nice. Um, it's quite a cool animation. And if you had more than one cable, when it comes to the vertex painting, you just make more than one area here. So for texturing this thing, um, I found that using the Linear Daylight um, from Grayscale Gorilla combined with the Pro Shaders from Video Copilot. So I believe what I used was um, the black metal for the outside of um, the shell as well as um, some copper for the inside. And then for the actual cable, I used a kind of gold. So I'll drag that onto the sweep nerves, change it to cubic and seamless, and change both of these to seamless as well. So now, if we rotate the sun round and change it to just off white, You see we get this really nice look with pretty much no effort involved at all. So if we rotate this round, so it's showing onto um, the crack here, 
And then what we can do here is actually put in some depth of field. If we change the picture to uh, 1280 by 720, right click, go to depth of field. I'm going to put this up to 10, and on the lens, change the shape to an octagon. And then if I zoom out a tiny bit, just so we can see this about here, and then, oh no, that's not in the camera. Um, if we make sure we're in the camera by pressing the little button here, zoom out a bit, then we can go out of the camera and we can look at where our focus distance is. So we want this kind of uh, close like here. And then under details, just add some front and back blur. And I believe the back blur is something like 70 and the front blur is on something like um, 40. And then if we render this out quickly, shouldn't take too long as there aren't, it's only the one light in the scene. But you can see we get this really nice look um, really easily um, with a bit of animation this will look really nice and it's really simple to do and this is just one thing you could use it for there are thousands of other applications and this is just another way you can use the kind of Trousy and Nitro Blast um, rather than just exploding a bit of text this kind of gives it a bit more and this is a very brief kind of look at uh, spline dynamics as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and feel free to wish me a happy birthday and whatever. Um, until next time this has been Ian.